Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Baltimore Peach Cake. That's right, everything I know about Baltimore I learned from watching The Wire, which is why I knew very little about this cake. All right, they really didn't talk too much about old German desserts on the show. But nevertheless, when I did find out about this cake, which is really more of a bread, I was very intrigued and decided to give it a try. And what follows is my fairly successful first time attempt. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the dough, which we will begin by adding some sugar to this bowl, along with a package of dry active yeast, which we will activate with some very warm but not too hot milk. Okay, something around 95 to 100 degrees. And you can use a thermometer if you want, but I just tested by feeling with my pinky, which I've had calibrated to be accurate within two degrees. And then we can go ahead and finish up these wet ingredients with some melted butter, as well as one large beaten egg. And that's it, we'll take a whisk and give this a mix. And once we can feel that all that sugar's been dissolved, we can go ahead and add our flour. Which generally for things like this, especially when we haven't made them before, we don't wanna add all the flour at once. Okay, it's always much easier to add if you need it. And by the way, I'm using all purpose here. Although the word on the street is, is that traditionally some wheat flour was actually used also. So just something to keep in mind, if you're into that kind of thing. So I dumped some in and gave it a stir. And after just a few moments, I could tell it was still super wet. So I went ahead and added in the rest. And continued stirring until it was almost all incorporated. At which point I stopped and added the last ingredient, which is going to be some salt. And yes, I'm pretty sure you could add this right at the beginning. But I'm always getting emails from people that are afraid the salt's going to kill the yeast. And they ask me why I don't add it later in the process. So stirring it in at this point is dedicated to them. Or maybe I just forgot. There's really no way you'll ever know for sure. But anyway, I went ahead and mixed that up until I had a very, very wet and very sticky dough. And at this point, I was wondering if it was too wet and maybe I should add some more flour. But I kept thinking this is called a cake and not a bread. And I do want to keep it on the moist side and do not want it too dry. So I decided to leave it alone. And by leave it alone, I mean cover it with a damp towel and let it sit in a warm spot for about an hour and a half or until it doubles in size. And while we're waiting for that to happen, we can go ahead and prep our peaches. And for that, we will use some classic peach slicing technique, which means first find a seam and cut all the way around like this, and then give it a little twist to separate it into halves. And then once we pull out that stone, we are ready to slice this into whatever size pieces we want, which for me is gonna be four pieces per half, which is eight pieces per peach. Oh yeah, Chef John's pretty good at math. Oh, and by the way, go ahead and peel these if you want, but I don't think you should because I think it looks a lot better if you don't. And once baked, you do not even know those skins are there. And besides, we could probably all use a little extra fiber. But either way, we'll go ahead and slice up three or four peaches, depending on the size, or until we have enough to cover the top of our dough. Speaking of which, after about an hour and a half, mine had doubled and looked a little something like this. And as I proceeded to deflate this with my spatula, part of my brain was telling me, you probably should have added some more flour this seems a little too wet. But another dumber part of my brain said, you know what, it's probably fine. Just keep going. So I did. And I went ahead and transferred that into a well-buttered baking dish. And what we're going to need to do once that's all been transferred in is take our spatula and attempt to pull it into each corner and then even it out as best we can. Which for something this elastic and soft and sticky is going to take you a few minutes. But the good news is, for whatever reason, that was surprisingly satisfying to do. And then what we'll do once that dough has been thoughtfully distributed is cover this in plastic and let it rise for another half hour to 45 minutes or until it roughly doubles in size again. And approximately 41 minutes later, mine looked like this, at which point we can unwrap it and we can top the top with peaches. Or if you like less words, we can top with peaches. And of course, we're going to want to make sure those all go in the same direction so as not to annoy certain people who would be very upset if we had some go in one way and some go in the other. All right, you know who you are. But anyway, we'll go ahead and place those on as shown, where we have them almost touching, but we can still see a little bit of dough in between. And we'll also want to sort of press those in a little bit so the surface is relatively flat. And then to finish this up, I went ahead and drizzled and brushed a little bit of melted butter over the top, maybe more than a little, like a couple tablespoons. And then last but not least, I finish this off by dusting the top with some demerara sugar, which is sort of a large crystal light brown sugar, but just a light sprinkling of regular brown sugar or regular white sugar should work the same. 
And that's it, our Baltimore peach cake is now ready to transfer into the center of a 375 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes or until nicely browned and cooked through. And by the way, those times I just gave you are what I want you to do, not what I did, which was about 35 minutes. And we'll get to why in a second. But anyway, at this point I assumed this was cooked perfectly. And I even tested with a toothpick, which came out clean so I thought it was good. But as we'll eventually discuss, that wasn't necessarily the case. But for now, let's forget about that. And just focus on how unbelievably gorgeous this is. I mean, come on, look at that. But not for too long, please. Because if we're going to glaze this with jam, which I am, we want to do that while it's still hot. So what we'll do is take some peach or apricot preserves and heat that up with a little touch of water so it's brushable. And we will go ahead and give the top a very generous glaze. Which, by the way, I'm told is kind of controversial. Okay, some folks consider it mandatory, while others will say it's an abomination, which is kind of harsh. But anyway, I'm a glazer from way back. So given the option, I'm always going to go with the glaze over the no glaze. And that's it. Once we have that brushed on, we will simply let this cool all the way down to room temp before we try to serve it. Which was not easy, but I did. And then once cooled, I went ahead and cut a slice. And at first glance, I was very excited and thought I had had beginner's luck, and it was perfect. And I have to say that first bite was absolutely delicious. Okay, it was sort of like a peach sweet roll or a peach cinnamon roll without the cinnamon. But then I realized that the dough directly underneath the fruit hadn't quite cooked enough and was still a little bit doughy, which wasn't necessarily an unpleasant experience, but was a little bit odd texturally. And that will be a lot easier to see when I use the fork here. So yes, next time I think I will add a little more flour so the dough's a little stiffer. And I'm probably gonna leave it in the oven for about five to 10 extra minutes. In fact, it was such a moist dough, I probably could have went until the top was almost too brown and then pulled it out. So fair warning, you are probably going to need to adjust this, which is fine, since you are, after all, the Omar Little, of this not being too doughy in the middle. But overall, for a first attempt, I was extremely happy with how this came out. And it really is sort of unique. I mean, it's not a bread or a cake. It's some weird hybrid. But of course, since we are calling it cake, I had to test to see if it would work with ice cream, which it did, by the way. So to summarize, with a few minor tweaks, I think this would be an absolutely fantastic recipe to break out in the middle of peach season. Or even with other fruits like plums or cherries or berries. I really think this would work well with all those things and more. But anyway, that's it. My first attempt at Baltimore peach cake. Believe it or not, I've heard the original recipe called for sauteed onions on the top as well. And no, I'm not kidding. So if you happen to try that and it works, send me a picture. Otherwise, I'll just finish up by saying, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.